Within the realm of modern methods of construction, nothing has generated as much interest as CLT, cross-laminated timber. So let's take a look at what CLT is. This short video is going to cover the basic principles of CLT. Alongside some of the technical aspects, we will look at where you might find additional information on its use and application. One of the main manufacturers operating in Europe and supplying the UK is KLH. And most of the information in this lecture is from their literature. The KLH website has some good information on the principles of CLT, as well as some technical information on weight, dimensions and thermal performance. So what are CLT panels? CLT is a system of manufacturing building elements from mass timber. Panels can be whole parts of a building, such as a wall, roof or floor, and they will often have window and door openings pre-cut during the manufacturing process. CLT panels are made from layers of laminated timber. These layers alternate so that no two adjacent layers will have their grain running in the same direction. This provides strength and rigidity and reduces the possibility of warping. Panels are made from an odd number of layers, or lamellas, with typically three, five or seven layers making up each panel. The reason for the odd number of layers is to ensure that the outer faces have the grain running in the same direction. Each lamella is glued to the next. The bond between the layers is entirely reliant on the glue, as no mechanical fixings are used. The glue most commonly used is a polyurethane adhesive, although some manufacturers also use a melamine formaldehyde based adhesive. The direction of the outer laminations is important to the way the panel will be used. For walls, the outer layer should be vertical or transverse. For floors and ceilings, the opposite, longitudinal orientation is used. During the manufacturing process, it's possible for windows and doors to be cut through the panels. Due to the nature of the solid panel, if the design has enough material of the window, there is usually no need for additional lintels or structural beams. Openings through the CLT can be made any shape which is able to be cut by CNC, so additional design possibilities can be opened up. Resistance to racking is handled by the structure of the panel, unlike in a timber frame construction. The exception would be if there was a significant number of openings cut through the panel, but who would use CLT and cut most of it away? All manufacturers are different and have different capabilities when it comes to producing large panels. KLH currently has a maximum size of 16.5 meters by almost 3 meters. When designing for CLT, access routes need to be thought about. It's pointless creating a huge panel if the road leading to your site cannot take the delivery vehicle. For CLT, insulation is most commonly installed to the outside of the panels, either as a semi-rigid fibre insulation or as rigid boards. A variety of finishes are available. Buildings can be clad in many traditional materials such as brick or timber, or render can be applied directly over the insulation layers. As with most building components, it's important to work to the manufacturer's details and specification. KLH have very good information on their website covering construction, connections and installation. Thanks for watching. If you want to know more about CLT, there's some links in the description below and on the course page. And I'll put some links in the end page to some other videos which are relevant to this series.